All right. Um, hi there, this is Jacob Nash. And this is a review of circular motion. Uh, sorry about that, that I, it was delayed because I forgot that I had to have my earbuds in to do it. But um, let's start out by what background information do you need to know? You need to know that velocity for circular motion is two pi r times revelations divided by time. And the centripetal acceleration is v squared divided by r. And the centripetal force is mass times acceleration that is centripetal also. But you never put this on a free body diagram. Always remember that. And then this is a, a different kind of gravity force, which considers the universal uh, gravitational constant or, and it, it um, you multiply that by the two masses and you divide it by the sum of the radiuses and you square that. Don't forget your squares. And while these three are just something that you needed to uh, derive for a minimum or escape velocity or, um, gravitational constant, um, which um, the universal, uh, the G, the big G is a constant and it is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. So now let's get on with the questions. All right, let's see what we have here. Two objects have mass M and they are separated by distance D. The gravitational force is F. How does the force of gravity change for these different things? This is factor of change. So if the distance is doubled, well, first of all, let's just say what is the the gravity force well it is g times the masses divided by the radius squared so if the distance between them is doubled that what you do is you make everything one except for what you're changing so you're changing the radius, we'll make that two and we'll make it squared and make everything else one. So one, 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 because it's not changing. And so you, the top becomes one, the bottom becomes four. So that's how it changes by a fourth thing or whatever you would call it, divided by four. So not gonna do any more of those, but that's how you would do a factor change one. And so let's look at this one. A satellite um, with that mass orbits around a planet with that uh, mass with this radius. What is the force acting on the satellite? So we're gonna have to do the gravity force, which we already said was G M1 m2 divided by the radius squared. Now I like to put the sum of the radi radii and it, because you have to know that the, that radius, if these are our two um, objects, the r that we use includes this whole length, the radius of both and the distance in between them. So this is what we need to do. Oops. We, we put in G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And the two masses, we have a 1000 kg mass. And we also have a 
try to write this thing faster. Set point five times 10 to 26 mass. And the sum of the radii, um, well, the satellite, um, it doesn't tell us the radius of the satellite. So we only use the radius of the the planet. And uh, the distance between them is it doesn't tell us that, but we'll therefore we would just use that. But when we solve that, we would get. 5,317 newtons. All right. And now let's see, what's the acceleration? Well, acceleration, if you rearrange Newton's equation, is it would be the force of gravity divided by the mass. But we need to do the sum of the masses. Oh, wait, never mind. For the, this is for the, um, not the system, for the satellite. So just the mass of the satellite. So we do a thousand and we did and 5317 was uh, worse. Sorry that this takes a long time to write because this is the only thing I could use. I used to have an iPad. If you have seen my um, engineering or algebra, things or even some of the pre-calculus ones but it it was stupid it it never saved any of the recordings because it tried to act like it had no storage but that is the acceleration now the velocity all right how do we find velocity oh we can use this equation Okay. Um, oh, wait. We're trying to find the velocity. So we do 5.32. And the radius is 9.7 times 10 to the 7th. And I'm not writing that down. That's not going to have enough room. But you remember the squared. And when you take the square root of that, you would get a crazy number, which is um, 22,717 meters per second. And that's your answer. All right, now let's see, De derive the equation for acceleration due to gravity, which is this little g. So, um, well, we know that the force of gravity is, oops, this and what we're trying to find is g but you're like uh where's the small g well we can rewrite this as mass times uh gravitational constant or not gravitational constant but acceleration due to gravity and so we can just make this a proportion And by the way, you, um, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but, um, well, I'll just go ahead and say it. The, the mass that's over here is the smaller one. So we mass two, let's assume that's a smaller one. And so when you cross multiply, you would get M two G R squared, equals G M1, M2. We have M2 on both sides. And we can divide by the radius squared. So it equals this. That's how you derive it.
So now let's look at a different problem. A 0.75 kg ball is attached to a one meter rope and whirled in a vertical circle. The rope will break when the tension exceeds 450 newtons. What is the maximum speed that the ball will have at the bottom without breaking the rope? Ooh, how do we do that? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, we, if we want to find velocity, we could find velocity doing centripetal acceleration equals v squared over r, but um, we don't know acceleration, but we could find acceleration by doing sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And the sum of the forces, well, let's draw a free body diagram. At the bottom there, well, the tension is always where the rope is. So the tension is gonna be up. And the force of gravity is gonna be down. Um, Cause it always is. Um, so that means, well, Center is always positive, okay? Center positive. So uh, tension force is positive, force of gravity negative. So the tension force minus the gravity force equals mass times acceleration, but we can change acceleration to this, which is what we when, know it equals to. So now we can plug in our values that we know. And this, by the way, is mg. So tension force, it said it could not exceed 450. And then mass is 0.75 times gravity. And then that equals mass And then, and then we're trying to find velocity and over the radius, which was one, because that's how long the rope is. So that means that's the radius. All right. Then when you uh, solve for V, remember you have to take the square root. It is 24 meters per second. So A is the answer. Let's see. Let's look at this next one. A 1500 kg car travels at a constant speed of 22 meters per second. Now let's take a break for a second. What makes something in uniform circular motion? Well, the following things have to be constant. Velocity radius, not acceleration though. It doesn't have, that doesn't have to, just so you know. All right, go back to this. So it has a constant speed of 0.2 meters per second um, with a radius of 85 meters. What is true? The velocity of the car is changing. Hmm, well, at first you might be like, no, it's constant. Well, it didn't say constant velocity, it said constant speed. Is that the same thing? No. But let, let's keep going. The car is characterized by constant velocity. Um, wait, the car? Oh, does it have a, a constant velocity? Um, well, how do we know if it does? Well, the, the velocity, we can use the centripetal acceleration equation. It's based on the radius and acceleration. The acceleration is changing. So that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a constant velocity. And also the direction is not constant. It, so direction, constant, 
velocity constant, but it's not. Does it have a constant acceleration? No. It, does, it doesn't say that it does. And also, once again, the direction is not constant. The car has a velocity vector that points along the radius. Velocity vector does not point to the radius. The car has an acceleration vector that is tangent at all times. No, that's not the case. Velocity is tangent. Ac acceleration is not tangent. So the answer is A, the velocity is changing. So, um, let's see. One more question. The mass of the mass MS orbits a mass MP. That has twice the radius. What is the speed, assuming the a per, a perfectly circle, circular orbit? So what what do we do? What in the world? Well, what do we know? We know that the rate there's a if you multiply two times the radius of the planet, if you multiply that by two, you get the satellite. Yeah. So how do we find velocity? Well, Well, we, we can use the sum of the forces equals, well, actually there's something important to know. When you have, in a case like this, the centripetal force is the same as the gravity force. So we can actually say that this equals this. Um, and so we can change this to MAC. And then we can further change it to MV squared over R. We're trying to find the velocity. So we would cross multiply and that would give us MV squared R equals G Hold up, hold up. MV squared, and that looks like a V still. That's dumb. Um, oh, sorry. R squared. Don't forget that. Okay, so MV squared R over, and then, or not over, equals. G M one M two R squared, and remember this M is M two, so the M twos cancel out, and the we we end up having just an R on this side because it divides out and one goes away, cancels that out, but there's still one left over. So, so we cancel that out. So now we have this. Um, oh, wait, no, if you divided that, then you'd have to divide the R. It wouldn't still be multiplied by it. So it would be this. And remember, it's two times the R, so we can say two R. So the velocity equals square root of GM1 over two R. 
So that's a little bit tricky, but that's why I want to do this one. So that equals that. Actually not. It is D actually, because um, you would have you would have to add two radiuses or the radii, whatever. Um, so we, we remember we have a satellite. Let's just say this is the satellite and it's orbiting a planet. The radius is remember that the, the this is two but the um, radius of the planet was one. So you add them together and that gives you three. Okay, so that's a little hard because remember you have to add all the radii of all the parts of it. So that's it for this video. And just a reminder as some things that were, may have not been made as clear at the beginning, at the beginning I don't know why I made me scroll back up. Okay, you have to add the radii of the objects and the distance for R. And don't forget your squares because then you'd get the wrong answer. And for, well, I'll just do this this one um you can set the centripetal force equal to force of gravity and whenever you're finding or when you set fg equal to mg m is the smaller mass or M2. Well, I'll just say when. Okay. So those are the things that you need to remember along with everything else that I said. But that is it for this um, unit three review. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.